Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? Today I'm going to code a feature with you. That feature is widely applicable. It is how to save the user's preference. I will firstly walk through how it looks like when it is built in CodeMK so that we stay on the same page for the goal. Then I'm going to show you how to build the feature from ground up step by step. We're going to touch different technologies, things like eye options, JSON serialization. I'm also going to show you some caveats that I experienced while building this feature, and I hope you will enjoy the content. Without further ado, let's get started. In context of Codename K, let's take a look at the scenario from the user's perspective. For those new to this series, Codename K will sync the data, the numbers, to the backend of the user's one drive. To some users, syncing makes sense. It backs up data. It potentially makes the numbers available for other clients. But to others, they might just want a standalone application that records the numbers locally. They don't care about the signing dialog as well. So that becomes a different user have different needs for the same application. To address the needs for both, I add these menu options. This allows me to enable or disable the sync. And I'm displaying the settings on the status bar. Of course, the settings will be saved so that when the user quit and they come back to the application, they won't lose the performance. Let me show you how I build it from the ground up. Let's start with an empty console application. The first thing is to build a data contract for the user settings. So I'm going to create a new class named user configuration. Then I'm going to put a boolean property there. Is sync enabled? That's pretty much it for now. To make it work as a user preference, there are two major scenarios. Load the settings and save the settings. And I'm going to tackle them one by another. Let's do the load first. I am planning to save the settings into a JSON. Let me start by manually typing the settings. It has a section of user configuration and then a property is sync enabled. Now we're going to look into how to load those values. Here we have several choices. I could use a JSON serializer to deserialize it, or I could use I options. I picked the latter. It is a little bit more cold, but it provides features like monitoring the file change. And I'll show you the cool things that we could do with that. For now, let's focus on reach the goal first. To use I options in this demo, I will need to add some packages. They are used to load configurations from JSON file, provide dependency injections, Binding JSON values to classes. Those are very basic packages. You probably already have them, like I do in CodeMK. And now I will show you how to load JSON into iConfiguration. We start with uh, having a configuration builder called the extension method of add JSON file. It takes several arguments, like the path to the JSON file. Is it optional? And do we want to reload the settings on change? And after that, we need to call build method on the builder. That way, we will get an I configuration object that holds the settings from the JSON file. Then we need a dependency injection container. Again, this is for me to show the essential parts in your project, you probably already have it. What are you going to do? It's just binding the settings from I configuration to the class of user configuration that we created earlier. Remember, we created a section. It happened to be the same name as user configuration class. So other settings on I configuration, if there's any, won't be supplied. That's all that is needed. Let's create a consumer class to display the settings. Inside of the constructor, we inject the I options of user configuration. We're going to provide a print sync settings method. Whenever this method is called, it will read the settings from the option and print it on screen. Like uh, is sync enabled? And the value is going to be true or false. Now let's register the consumer. Build a service provider. Then we're going to create an instance of a consumer from the service provider. And I'll run the code. Oops, it crashed. Well, I did it on purpose. 
Take a look at the code on line 8. This user settings.json.c is not optional. Did we create the file? Yes. Is it in the right path? No. And this is why, on the initial stage, I almost always set optional to false for applications, so that if some of the settings do not show up, it's not because of misposition of files. With that, here's how I fix it. I think it is easier to fix it in Visual Studio, but this is equivalent to say, set the build action of none to user settings.json.c and copy it to the output folder when it is newer. Run it again. There you go. The default value for isSync enabled is false. But we have a user settings of true. So the result is true. We implemented a pool module together just now. That is when the method of print sync settings is called, we read the configuration and print the value. This model works most of the time, but occasionally, we would want the push model that when the settings changed, the consumer would be notified. Let's see a demo in codename K. On the left, I have codename K up and running. Pay attention to the sync enablement status. It is set to true. Now on the right hand side, I have the configuration file. The value for enable sync is set to true. I'm going to change it to false. At the moment, the file is saved. The status on the UI become false. Notice there's no operations on the UI, but the change to the file pushes the notification to my code, and I'm going to show you how to do a feature like that. This is actually where I options start to show its strength. But instead of I options of T, we need to use a variant of it. I options monitor of T. Let's update the code after the change of the type. We don't need to do too much to the existing implementation for the pool model, except the value becomes current value. But that's still pull, not push. The trick is to call on change method on the options and provide a lambda to be the callback when there's a new value of the user configuration. Now the consumer will need to let the outside of the class know there's the new settings, and I'm creating an event to do that. This event takes handler of user configuration, and it will be raised when the I options monitor detects a new user configuration. That is pretty much it. Now, let me update the main code so that we could easily observe it. I'm going to register handler for user configuration changed. And whenever it happens, it will output a slightly different message, like uh, spot a new value for sync and the true or false. If I run this code as is, the process would be completed in one second. So I'm just going to use the trick that I use often. That is to wait for a user input. Oh, and also, don't forget to set reload on change to true when you're adding the JSON file. Obviously, without it, the monitor is not going to work. Now, time to see the result. After the code outputs the settings for the first time, it's to stay there waiting for user's input. But at the same time, the event is hooked up. Let me locate the user settings file, the one in the bin folder rather than the one in the source. By the way, I have auto saves turned on in VS Code. So when the time I change the value, you'll see two lines of output corresponding to the new value. You're probably going to ask why twice. That is due to the implementation details of the file monitor. This usually won't impact the code logic, but if it does, look into having a debouncer before raising the event. Actually, debouncer is an interesting topic by itself. Let me know if you are interested in hearing more about it. For now, let's say it's out of scope, and we have a piece of code running. Whenever there's a user configuration change, it will be notified. And if you ask me, that sounds pretty decent on the loading side. Let's take a look at the savings. Savings is relatively straightforward. You just grab the object in the memory, serialize it into string, and save it into file. Are there caveats? Yes. Well, let's start by creating a configuration writer service, and then tackle those uh, caveats one by another. To write the configuration file, I'm creating this write configuration async method. I prefer async method gear because it's going to be a disk I.O. It will take in the user configuration file and the cancellation token. I'm adding a default value to the cancellation token just so that it will be there for the consumer to call. The first thing to consider is what is the file name to use and where is the path to the file. 
We also have the reader to consider. It would be great if the reader and the writer always pointing to the same file. Here's a trick. I would put a static read-only field in the configuration data contract, and I will usually assign a full path to the field. That will help mitigate the issue like where is the current folder, where is the XE folder, and where is the content folder, and especially when they are referring to different places. Now you don't have to follow this strictly, but this does help me reduce debugging deaths. Now in the spirit of uh, do not repeat yourself, I am going to update the reader and the saver to the same path. And then I'm going to try serialize the user configuration and save it. Now let's try to save a new configuration. Let's register the writer. Get an instance of the writer service. And call the right configuration, I think, method. In real, you probably want to start with the whatever existing settings is there. I just create an instance here to make it simple. And let's see it in action. On the surface, there's no error. But once you open the user settings.js on C, you're going to see the problem. The serialized settings is not in the format that we want. It doesn't come with the section named user configuration. So we need a wrapper class to be used as a section. Well, let's create one. Here, I want the section class to hold two pieces of information, the section name and the user configuration object. I make it a generics, so it will work with other configuration files as well. Now, instead of outputting the user configuration directly, let's see how the code will look like when we have a section wrapper. Basically, Instead of serializing the user configuration directly, we give it a section of user configuration for serializing. And if you are very familiar with the serializer, you would know this is not going to work, but I still want to see how it looks like at this moment. So I'll just go ahead and run the code again. As you can see, we want a section named user configuration but we get a property named the section name and then the user settings in value. On the bright side though, all the information that we needed is now serialized. It's just uh, that it's positioned. To fix that, I use something called JSON converter. Let me show you how to do it. A custom JSON converter inherits from JSON converter of T. It is, in a nutshell, used to tell the serializer how to serialize or deserialize some specific class. And that specific class is section of T in our case. And of course, there are two methods that really matters: read for deserialization and write for serialization. In our case, the deserialization is handled by I options, so we don't need to deal with it. I'm going to just leave it alone. When it comes to serialization, we are going to firstly start an object. Then we write a property within the section name. After that, we're going to rely on the serializer to do the heavy lifting for serialize the user configuration. And finally, we always want to end the object just in case. Okay, once we have it, we will need to let the serializer know there is the JSON converter like that. So we update the code to provide a JSON serialization options. And we're going to append the section info JSON converter into the converter list. And of course, we'll let the serializer to know to use these uh, options. Okay, now let's run the code again. As you can see, user settings under the section of user configuration, exactly what we want. 
And if I change the value from false to true, the saved result will become true. That is quite a few hoops we jumped through together. Did it worth it? Let me show you something. This is four different instances of the codename K running at the same time. I'm going to change the settings on one of the instances, and we're going to see the value changed in the status bar simultaneously. And here we go. All right, my friend, that's it for today. Keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.